actually reconstitute what our molecule looks like. Right? So this is one of those gatekeepers I was telling you about. This is what this is the protein that senses the environment and tells the bacteria when to form a spore. And then this blue guy down here, that's the inhibitor molecule I was telling you about. So this is the inhibitor that um, when this protein is expressed in the cell, it will not allow the cell to spore. Okay? And so by determining the X-ray crystal structure of this, we know precisely now how, how this protein is working, right? So it turns out that the protein is positioned just well enough that it actually um, it inhibits the, the, the crosstalk between this protein domain here and this protein domain here. And that crosstalk is crucial in the sporulation. So, that, so this molecule prevents the domains from interacting with each other. So that's one of the things you can do to uh, with extra crystallography is you can really answer some basic biological questions, but then you can, uh, so we know how, how the correlation pathway is working now, but then you can also, um, you can use also use extra crystallography in a more applied way. You know, I know many of you are interested in precision medicine. Um, so what people are doing now with some of these extra crystal structures is um, they're using them in the field of uh, what's called intelligent drug design. So traditionally how, uh, anti-cancer compounds or new antibiotics were discovered is you would have some target of interest, the protein, say it's uh, an alpha protein of some sort, or some protein in, in infectious bacteria, and you would screen that target against these library of compounds, so thousands, hundreds of thousands of compounds, and you would look for some kind of effect, basically. Um, but without knowing the detailed structure, you were essentially shooting in the dark, right? If you don't really know what your what your target looks like, you just have to hope have to hope that one of these compounds will have an effect against your target. But now, with the crystal structures available, what people can do is they can take a look at the crystal structure of something, and they can say, oh, well, you know, here's like a here's a pocket, and maybe something, some kind of inhibitor might fit in there, and maybe we, through chemistry we can actually design something that fits just like a lock and key. Um, so this uh, this actually, some of this stuff is from a corporation. And they're doing some really great work on uh, ribosome antibiotic co crystal structures, um, designing better antibiotics, antibiotics that can overcome uh, bacterial drug resistance, because you know, that's a real problem these days. Uh, and so what they've done in this case is they actually had a crystal structure of the ribosome with uh, two different compounds, right? So. Uh, these, these are actually from separate crystal structures. So they had a crystal structure of, of the ribosome with the compound blue, and then crystal structure with the compound pink. And they saw that when they actually put these together, there was some overlap between the structures. So they basically wanted to enhance the activity of these molecules. And then by using the crystal structure, what they did was they essentially, through, uh, through some uh, organic synthetic techniques, they designed a bridge element that would fuse these two antibiotics to make a new compound that basically had um, exponentially larger efficiency against uh, against uh, the ribosome and shutting down protein synthesis. And this, they've actually been taking this molecule and, and shown that it has efficacy against uh, against bacterial species that were resistant to either of these on their own, but then the combined effect of these uh, overcomes that resistance. You know, there's some really interesting stuff going on in industry uh, with extra crystallography. You know, if you want to pursue science and maybe you know, make a little more money, you can go work for a company, still do some really cool stuff. Um, and then some other things you can do with, with extra crystallography is this um, this emerging field of basically in silico enzyme design. So what I mean by in silico is this is all essentially done in, in the computer using what's known about proteins and how they fold and uh, what are the energy requirements of, of active sites to design enzymes that catalyze reactions that aren't normally found in nature. And there's this guy, um, so traditionally the way this, this stuff was approached, but, you know, this was physicists more usually traditionally uh, tackled this problem, but they were um, applying first principles to a lot of their studies, and they weren't 
weren't really getting anywhere. But then this guy, David Baker, came along, who um, was more of a biophysicist, and he just said, well, let's take what we know about physics, right? But let's also take what we know about existing crystal structures, because we have, there are tens of thousands of these crystal structures available now. And let's ask, well, what do we already know, and what can we gain from that? So he's trying to combine both the, the, the physics and uh, the biology to then develop these computational methods to improve the, the areas of silico enzyme design, right? And they recently had this really exciting uh, result where they designed an enzyme that can cat catalyze the field alderase reaction. And so this is a reaction that's very important in the field of synthetic organic chemistry because that no naturally occurring enzyme in nature actually catalyzes at all. So no, no, no living organism catalyzes this reaction. And using some of their computational methods and information that they already have about crystal structures, they designed an enzyme which could actually carry this reaction out. So you know, you could think about other ways that you might apply these things. You know, we've heard a little bit today about the oil spill in the Gulf, and so it turns out uh, Baker's group is actually doing some work on trying to design enzymes that dissolve uh, hydrocarbons, so you know, oil, right? And uh, then you could um, think about introducing these enzymes into E. coli, like the uh, way Fetter talked about, to grow up full loads of this stuff, and then you could have enzymes that might be able to dissolve oil, so you can think about applying this in the fields of uh, environmental remediation, right? So there are many things that you can do, uh, both in terms of medicine and uh, the, uh, applications to organic chemistry and environmental sciences, using the knowledge from crystal structures, so knowing where every single atom is placed, designing molecules that can fit together with proteins to uh, really do some exciting work in, in a lot of different fields. And uh, like I said, the field is pretty well established now, but um, it's still expanding and there's still a lot of room for people to make uh, great contributions. You know, you guys are applying to colleges, just you know, look, try to look for the guys that are doing you know, crystallography, structural biology type stuff, and you probably find some that you can participate in. If you want to do some further reading on this stuff, there's a book that uh, just came out actually uh, called Bio Molecular Crystallography by Bernhard Grupp. So you may not be able to read that, but his last name is R U T P. Um, and he also has a website that gives you just a brief uh, introduction to some of the theory and the physics behind uh, crystallography. So yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know about, about that technique and what you can do with it. Thanks.